So lately I've been taking some time to catch up on all the great channels out there to get some new inspirations and fresh approaches. I've really been into Dungeon World lately, and so I decided to try creating a big set piece that would be used to occupy an entire night's gaming session. Uh, if you're a longtime follower of this channel, then you know this is a big departure from the stuff that I usually do, but uh, it was a lot of fun to put it together. This is an encounter in the Underdark, and uh, at the end I'm going to give you notes on all of its features and how everything interacts, what's going on, and some ideas that you can use to run it. <clears throat> at a later date, I hope to actually publish a short pamphlet, kind of like I did uh, for episode 17 with the Vault of Iptiz and episode 30 for Julinda's Gauntlet. This would be the free video supplement for it. Um, you're going to see very clearly where I've gotten help from. The overall approach, being one big set piece, kind of came from Hankerin over at Drunkens and Dragons. Uh, you'll see techniques from Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft. And, of course, a lot of Scotty stuff. And, as always, there's a few brand new ideas of my own mixed in. So, hopefully you'll enjoy, and let's get to the table. I began with some 1 inch thick polystyrene, and with my knife fully extended, I cut out an irregular oval kind of shape, about 22 inches across and 16 inches wide. Then I drew on roughly where my pathway was going to be with a sharpie, and I hit that path with solid white PVA glue. Pebbles. and a partial coverage of sand. Then I cut another chunk of polystyrene, which had been traced using the main piece so that the outside edges would match. And for the inside edge, I chamfered the top, and then chipped away at it with my knife. We've done this before, and I'll put a link on the screen to the tutorial for doing it. Attach this to the main board using white PVA glue. There's too much surface area for hot glue, it'll cool too quickly. Now take some pure acetone and brush it on all of the exposed area. Hit some areas harder than others to get a nice irregular natural looking cave. Base the entire thing in black acrylic. Now I'm using slate gray, which is a very slight blue and somewhat bright, and I'm dry brushing the entire piece except for the outside edges. Yeah, look at that great rock texture. Alright, now we're going to make three archways. Just cut out a U-shaped chunk, about 5 inches tall and 5 inches wide, something like that. And from that, cut out a smaller U-shape, so that the whole thing has a thickness of about an inch and a half or so. Again, chip away at this with the same technique as before. Then hot glue it to a chipboard base, and I didn't film this, but go ahead and flock that base as usual with glue, pebbles, and sand, and base the whole thing in black, and dry brush it with slate gray. I'm going to cut it about a foot long, and try to curve my cut slightly so that it takes on an hourglass shape. and then chamfer the four corners. Now 
Now I took two slabs of dollar store foam board, one bigger than the other, texturized them with tin foil, and hot glue them together. And then hot glue the long piece onto that. Make sure the long piece is standing up straight. And top off the other end with two more slabs of foam board, simulating the ceiling of the cave. Then apply a good amount of hot glue, sort of tapering it from the base toward the center of the stalagmite. Again, not shown here, but base it in black and dry brush with slate gray. Here's some cool looking colored quartz rocks that I got from a crafting store. They were about $3 for a pouch of them. We're just going to use these and scatter them on the board. Now let's make some storage sacks. Cut a square of paper towel, about three inches across. Take a glass bead and set it in the middle. Fold and bunch the paper towel around it, and then tie a knot of twine to cinch it shut. Chop away the excess paper towel with scissors, and it's done. But I did decide to paint them with a 50-50 mixture of white PVA glue and suede to give it a nice burlap color. Be careful not to paint the twine. Here's a simple storage crate, which I made exactly using DM Scotty's technique. See the link? Now I'm going to build two sheds, each of which is 2 inches by 2 inches by 2 inches. The sides are single corrugated cardboard, which is randomly scored and creased. And the roof is the same as we did for the potion vendor back in episode 7. The door is just some leftover jumbo popsicle stick done up as a wood plank, again as in episode 7 and with a bead hot glued on as a doorknob. I made four bed rolls. These are one by two inch chipboard rectangles painted with burnt umber. And then I took some small rectangles of paper towel and drenched them in my flocking sealant mixture of two thirds white glue, one third water. And bunch it up on the chipboard chaotically. Let that dry completely, and then paint with that same burlap color we used for the storage sacks earlier. So here's the whole board assembled. And the premise is that there's a group of Duragar who are uh, doing a mine operation in the area, and something has gone wrong. So whether they're hostile or friendly, or uh, maybe they captured the party and brought them in and that's how the party came, or they're just passing their way through, uh, they come in through that archway we just saw. Here is the entrance to their mine, which is currently sealed off due to the issue they've run into. And here's the other exit from the cave. So this whole area is implied that there's walls around, and it's basically like a dome roof. This is a cave in the Underdark. Um, also recently, they have captured a surface-dwelling ogre, and he's currently captured. They're not very intelligent, but he might know enough to... Uh, uh, well, you can play it up however you want, depending on who frees him and how they do it. Um, he's a wild card for the encounter. And here's our storage platforms from episode 48, along with the crates and the storage sacks. This piece could be used to uh, enhance combat. we got high ground to consider. Maybe the whole thing tips over. Uh, who knows what's being stored in there. It could be treasures or it could be mundane. Up to you. Here's the stalagmite that we made, and notice its position. So it's it's kind of fragile, and depending on, uh, you know, if it were to be knocked over, it might bust open the mine. It might hit this shed. We'll talk about that shed in a moment. It might knock the storage platform over, or it might fall in the cage, destroying it and freeing the ogre. A lot of ways that that could go. This shed holds mining equipment, including a lot of explosives, TNT, that kind of thing. So play that up however fun you can. 
Here's the crew for Duragar with their bed rolls. Again, maybe they're friendly, maybe they're hostile, up to you. And up here is the foreman and his shed. This is just a shack where he sleeps and has basic supplies, or maybe it's got some magic stuff up to you. Uh, but that is the foreman. If the players are taken captive, perhaps they have to, uh, to help resolve the issue that the Duragar have been having here. So what I had in mind when I designed it was that they had, through their mining, uncovered a Chaos Ooze who uh, sporadically merges parts of planes to overlap with this one. So here's some Earth Elementals that, even though the, the door may not be off, um, they manifest, and maybe that's an encounter that kicks things into action. And then later, here's a, a Devil that came in from one of the, uh, the outer planes, again from the Chaos Ooze. So a lot of ways you could go with it. Behind that door in the mine, they could have uncovered anything that's given them trouble. And maybe they implore the players to help them. Of course, after they do that, Duragar are evil, so the post-encounter could go any number of ways. Uh, we had, uh, had fun with this. So, that's an encounter in the Underdark. I am Wylock, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time for a very special episode. <laughs>